We've been wanting to do an amphibious build for a long time. We just didn't know where to start until we saw this heap of parts on Craigslist. So that's how we wound up here. What are we looking at here? Oh, you know, just a amphibious six by six, you know, off-road thing. <laughs> the usual kind of uh, shenanigans. Well, let's start. Ooh. <laughs> it's one, got one manpower. There we go. <laughs> Are you fulfilling your childhood dreams? Oh yeah. We got the glorious, amazing Amphicat back home. This thing is it's such it's such a beautiful uh it's such a beautiful monster. We were at a gas station and some random dude walked by and just said, outstanding, one in a million. He's right, it is. It's, it's one in a million. I think I think that the, the main thing is, does it float? So I'm super stoked to have one of these finally because, and I don't know where I got the catalog or why, but I remember when I was a kid, like maybe 10, 12 years old, there was a, a, a brochure for this type of thing. They had the six wheel drive, they had the eight wheel drive. And I remember just like staring at that catalog for like weeks and months, just being like, I need one of those machines. I kind of forgot about them for a long time because I learned that they're actually really slow, but now I have the means to make it not slow and stupid. So that's what we're gonna do. But I mean, really, how can you beat an amphibious six wheel drive, basically a tank? <laughs> they can just land on Craigslist for a thousand bucks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> few things just now so when you pull back on one of these levers um, it engages the brake and it disengages the essentially the clutch for that side so if you pull them both back it disengages and lets the engine rev up a little bit it's um, kind of a bouncy ride as you can imagine no suspension but um, but you can clutch drop it you can essentially yeah <laughs> if you add a few more horsepowers Well, the plan is drive it as close to the pond as we can get and then um, drag it up the hill if we have to. Because we gotta find out if it floats, although the pond is mighty low right now. So it's more a test of its mud bogging capabilities. Yeah! There it is! All that's between us and the pond is this one little cliff section. Here we go. Yes. Yes. Normally you get something stuck and then you tow it uh, out of a sketchy situation, but today we're towing it toward and into a sketchy situation because, <laughs> you know, it can't make it here on its own power. So obviously we should try to go through a pile of mud and water. Should I go for it?
Is there any water on board? Oh yeah, we're taking on water. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean, it didn't immediately sink. Yeah. It just needs to be a lot more waterproof. It just needs to be patched up a bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna have to tow it out. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> it did a lot better than I expected in the pond. For after. sure, it crushed it, honestly. Like, honestly, if the pond was a little deeper and it had actually been floating the whole time, it would've, it would've moved around better, I think. Yeah. It is not a watertight machine. Not one bit. Obviously, we need to know how fast it goes around the track, or Probably if it goes around the track. Uh, it doesn't like hills, but maybe with a little momentum, it'll it'll handle it. And then uh, try to do a lap time and then rally it back to the shop and tear it apart so we can kind of see how everything works and uh, start making a plan for putting a bigger engine in it. Is that full brakes? Yeah. Hey, at least your engine's behind you. That helps a little. setup very basic you got of course the engine here centrifugal clutch chain drive to the gearbox and we've got a three-speed gearbox as far as I can tell it's got reverse neutral low and high and that drives this shaft here which is just a solid shaft with two clutch and brake assemblies basically and so when you pull back on one lever, it disengages the drive for that side with this little spinny bit here. It disengages this inner clutch part. And then if you pull back a little farther, it engages the brake out here on the disc, on the brake disc. And of course the same on this side. So, you know, full stop, you pull them both back, full go, you push them forward a little. So neutral is kind of like, it, it drives, but they slip a little bit. So you push it forward for full drive, and then, uh, you know, obviously, turn is opposites. Pretty basic setup. The whole chassis is just one big square piece of steel, and then the rest is just this plastic body. Yeah, I mean, the good news is that makes it easy to upgrade. We've got an obstacle on the course. We turned it into a quad. If you missed it, just look back a video or two. <laughs> it's a beast now. So after our uh, attempted pond crossing, I think that, first of all, all the chains were loose, so one of them might have been binding, but I think the main problem is one of the turning brakes was seizing up for some reason. It was just adjusted too tight, so I loosened it up, and uh, I think it's better than it ever was now. I think it's better than it started. I think that turning brake was kind of maybe too tight all along. Ready, set, go! Yes, he's using the berm. <laughs> it sounded like he got scared going down the hill. Yes, 34, 36, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, oh, 141. We have a new record. Before you tell me my time, shortest distance stopping, shortest stopping distance. Look at that. 
Oh yeah, that's true. Like one and a half vehicle lengths past the finish line. That's amazing. <laughs> well, it's not the slowest time. A minute 41. I mean, that's faster than driving a stock power wheels. Yep. Yeah, I even managed to shift into high gear and then back into, I accidentally hit reverse for a second there, so I went backward, but. <laughs> I heard a, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Comes. We should jump it. <laughs> yeah, so you know, the plan is throw a uh, phaser engine from one of those phasers right there, the twin cylinder 500cc two stroke, into here and uh, you know, make it more epic because that's what it needs is more power. So we're gonna do that, but. The next couple episodes coming out are very exciting because they're gonna be from our collaboration with Rich Rebuilds and our trip out to the East Coast. So it's very exciting. You're gonna to wanna to watch that.